This is a short video just about uh, context diagrams and data flow diagrams and how they um, relate to one another. So I'm going to give you an example of an ATM software program and I'm just going to show you how we do uh, this in terms of these two diagrams. The first of all I'm going to do a context diagram because this is the first diagram you'd always do and as I always do I draw a system and I just put the ATM pro program or the software in, in the middle of that system now I need to just draw any external entities in squares outside of that circle. So obviously one external entity or external thing to the software is the user and for an ATM possibly the, the bank as well. And then lastly all I need to do is put in uh, any information that's coming in or out of that system uh, to each external entity. So a user might end up putting a password in when you use an ATM and maybe an amount of money that you'd like and what type of transactions. The ATM normally gives uh, a balance or uh, kind of transactions you have available to the user. So that's the kind of stuff going in and out of uh, the ATM system to and from the user. And the ATM often is giving things like the password and also account details are coming out. So you obviously your account details aren't stored in the ATM. The ATM requests uh, the bank uh, account details and that gets sent back to the ATM. And that's generally a context diagram for a system as a whole. So it's a very, very high level overview of the entire system and some of its external ent entities. So that's a context diagram. What we're now going to do is a data flow diagram and what that basically is is it's it's looking into this diagram or into this system and uh, and trying to get it into a little bit more detail and so what we find is we can use a couple more and your textbook talks about uh, external entities a process and a data flow diagram so you can see over here external entity process data flow diagram and a data store uh, are the symbols you can use in data flow diagrams to de describe this process a little bit better and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break this ATM down into, let's just say, two systems. One is security, and the other one is account management. And so now instead of just one process in my context diagram, I've got security is process one, and account management is process two. And I still have the same external entities, so I've still got my user over here who's going to talk to the system in the bank later on but um, I'm going to in how, do, how do these people interact with the system in a bit more detail and so for instance the same thing your password might go through to uh, the external entity here and the security system is going to either give you access or deny access to you but how does the security system figure out the password? Well, it's more than likely got some sort of uh, account details database, and that's the reason I haven't finished off that square, because that's a data store. And the security system is going to ask that data store, is the password correct? And it's going to give up a yes or a no back to the security system. So that's giving a bit more detail about how the security system works with the data store. We also have, and we can do this in our uh, context or data flow diagrams, is we don't need to just have one uh, block for the user because it can become very messy. So I'm going to put my external entity and how is it communicating to and from this particular system. Well obviously once you've gone through the security system you're going to do things like how much money are you requiring uh, from the system that will also go and do some sort of check on the account details uh, and if there's enough money it'll give you an updated balance for instance and obviously yes no depending if you didn't have enough money it might just say no uh, and then coming back to the user is going to be the cash that you asked for and an updated balance. 
Uh, and finally, you might have one last external entity, which is still your bank. So from our context diagram, your bank, and you'll probably find that the account detail sends an update of account information or a report on all the details going on there get sent to the bank every now and then just so the bank knows that you know what's happening with all the different users and how much money is coming in and out of that uh, particular data store but you can see how this is now broken this context diagram which is just one system into two processes and including some of the other bits and pieces of detail and notice how I'm using my external entities uh, sometimes you could put, uh, I might have been able to put the user square over here and do, uh, you know, have only one user block, but I just thought it was simpler here to show. Notice I'm not showing any flow, I'm not sort of saying like oh, this happens first and then that or any, it's just generally saying the systems and then what information is going to and from which system. And then the next level data flow diagram from this kind of diagram is to start saying, okay, well, let's look at the security system in a bit more detail. And so you could probably break that down into two systems, and that would be 1.1 and 1.2. And then I'd also look at this account management system, and I might find that account management actually has three different subsystems, which is 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 and you'd build them a second level data flow diagram from those two. So that's the relationship between context data flow diagrams and how you start building them.